Good evening, all. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Okay, perfect. Thanks. <clears throat> Almost six o'clock, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, now I would like to open the regular city council meeting, Tuesday, July 7, 2020 at 6 p.m. Due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic emergency, we have to continue handle our city council meetings much differently than we usually do for the protection of the public and our staff. Now I'm going to ask our city manager to give a brief explanation to the public. City manager. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening. This meeting of the Gulf City Council is being conducted by teleconference and video conference in compliance with the state and county stay at home orders and as allowed by the governor's executive order N-29-20, which allows for a deviation from the teleconference rules required by the Brown Act. Members of the public will see city council members and city staff who are appearing by way of remote video and telephone com uh, connections. City council meetings will only be held by teleconference or video conference until further notice. Today, the agenda states that rather than attending in person, residents may submit written public comments by way of email to pubcom at cityofgulp.org. That's P-U-B-C-O-M at cityofgulp.org prior to the council meeting. Any written comments that were received will be read out loud during the city council meeting by the city clerk on the appropriate agenda item subject to the customary five minute time limit. We will try to check the email for additional public comments during the meeting if feasible. We are also trying a new format that allows the public to provide live public comment using the webinar feature in the Zoom app uh, that is broadcasting this meeting tonight. Members of the public may use the link identified on the agenda to enter the webinar as attendees. Members of the public should be able to use the raise hand option in the Zoom webinar to let us know that you would like to speak and should do so when the mayor announces the time for general public comment. We request as we do at typical in-person city council meetings that speakers provide their name and address when they are called on to speak and their line is unmuted. Attendees sh should also see a lower hand feature if they change their mind and uh, decide not to speak. If you do not see these features in the Zoom module you are using, it may be that your software is not up to date or because of another technical issue on the user's end. There will be an opportunity after the staff report for public comment on the item that has been uh, reviewed by staff prior to council action. Again, attendees using Zoom webinar will need to use the raise hand feature in order to provide a comment after any particular agenda item. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Eglin. Uh, Tina, may I have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Lozano? Here. Council Member Farmer? Here. Council Member Campion? Here. Council Member Lampson? Here. Mayor Sandu? Here. Please rise for the silent prayer and flag salute.
Next clue. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tina, may I have a read the statement, please? This meeting of the Galt City Council will be cable cast on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communication and Facing Cable Systems. The meeting is instruction and webcast at www.stackmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will air Friday, July 10th at 9 a.m. and Saturday, July 11th at 9 a.m. A DVD copy is available for checkout from any library branch. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item B. Uh, Council, any agenda approval, addition, or deletion? Thank you. Next agenda item C. Uh, presentation. There is one presentation, special event, co sponsorship application. Park and Recreation Department. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, tonight, we're going to bring forward a presentation by the organizations that are applying for the City of Galt special event uh, sponsorships. Uh, the purpose of the sponsorship is to set forth guidelines and criteria governing the granting of City of Galt funds or in-kind services for supporting local festivals, special events, community projects, or programs. The budget uh, for the special event uh, sponsorship program, including determination of the source of funding to offset the sponsorship program, was established on June 2nd, 2020, during the regular budget meeting. Uh, uh, the amount of $7,000 was established. So what we're going to do is we've given these groups the opportunity to come forward and talk to you about their event. Next council meeting, we will have all your information of exact cost or estimated cost. Uh, and then what you'll do is approve up to uh, $5,000 for each event, um, up to a maximum of $7,000 total. Um, and then, um, so with that in mind, who do we have on the line, Rose? Um, we have Grace M, we have Bob Olson, Rochelle Herendine, and Vet Track um, Festival. Okay. So if you'd like to allow one of the men, please, and if they can give their name. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. We'll go ahead and allow vet tracks to go first. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. This is Eric Lewis from Vet Tracks Festival. Hi, it's Nicole Blackwell. She's our financier of uh, Vet Tracks Festival. This year, um, with the pending COVID, uh, it, we've been on a hiatus. We're still waiting for further guidance from uh, the city or the Sacramento health official. But we were asking for the donation in kind to help offset the cost for uh, the, providing the police detail for our event. Uh, we've had it three years in Galt. Um, with the generous support of the city council, we have prevented 17 suicides. Um, four of them were from Galt. Um, and it, this event is it's about giving back to the community, getting more people involved, bringing PTSD awareness. And you know, the, the hardest thing for me as the, uh, the president and the organizer is, I'm afraid what happens if we don't do this event? You know, Because every year we have people come up to us and report that because of you guys, you, you, I'm not killing myself today. And that's the hardest thing to actually listen to because we have such an impact. And last year's event, um, it was awesome. We had no discrepancies at all. The, the police force was amazing. Everything, you know, the city of Galt opened their hearts to us again and uh, they continue to do it. And, and we want to keep it here. But, um, you know, the rising cost, the lack of sponsorship dollars due to the coronavirus, um, we're, you know, we're at the mercy of the city, uh, the city council. So, I mean, it, it's hard, but you know, we, there's obviously other organizations that need it too. So we just ask that, uh, 
me just be, you know, greatly considered. And hold on one second. Oh, <laughs> hi guys. Um, I don't, you probably don't know much about me. I'm familiar with Rose. Um, I work at FNM Bank. I've actually been a member of the community since I was nine, been in school there. I've worked in there, worked in the community for that long, still do. Um, this event um, is something that I've helped out with for the last two years, I believe it is, um, to bring PTSD awareness to light and to have a community event. When I think of a community event, I think of when the days when we used to have the Dairy Festival, if anyone remembers those, and the Strawberry Festival, where we get to to see people that we haven't seen in a while, you know, other families that we might have gone to school with, um, and then it, it, it promotes social networking and um, community outreach, community outreach, and uh, this event, I was last year, I think, uh, it was bigger than the year before. Yeah, it was bigger than before. And just the amount of people and everybody smiling and having a good time is, is something that's kind of rare at big events like that. And that's why I love Galt so much. So um, we just want you to take uh, into consideration, we've had it there many years. Um, we would like to continue to have it there. Um, we just need a little bit of help. Um, just like we have in the previous years with the police department and all that good stuff. And um, we just want to keep the tradition alive and um, keep the awareness of the, the, the whole point of the festival is that um, people do have PTSD. I actually suffer from it myself. Um, and music is a really, really good outlet for people to um, uh, basically get better or realize that you're not alone. Um, and it's amazing to see people that come up to you and talk to you in the booths and whatnot, um, that I, it's just, it's, well, yeah, I'm so glad we had this event, you know, and it's, it's great. It's a good community event. So that's that. So with that being said, we thank you for your consideration again, and we just hope everybody's staying safe. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mary, I'd just like to also, yeah. Mary, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to also add, that although you guys are approving a, a funding amount or looking at funding amounts, we will be, you know, if, if we're not able to hold a festival or an event due to the coronavirus and the restrictions, we will not go forward with them. Yeah, just because you're approving it today doesn't mean that it'll go forward if the restrictions are in place not to hold that event. So. Well, it just to clarify, they aren't approving anything today. They're hearing from each of the agencies. You'll, at your next meeting, uh, the council will consider approval, is that right? Yes, I'm sorry. At the next meeting, um, you'll you'll be approving those days. I believe this is your informational, right, uh, Tom, and the next- That's um, correct. That's correct, yeah. Thank you. And Armando, I have a question. What what kind of in-kind uh, thing we done with uh, this group last year? So what we did is we had uh, the police uh, uh, patrol that was in kind, the field rental, um, lighting and power, and that was the majority of the five thousand dollar cost that was uh, granted last year. Thank you. Any other council member have any comment or question? Then I move to the next one. Okay, so the next one we will um, have Rachel Herndine. Rachel, are you there? I think so. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm trying to turn this on. Sorry. Hi, guys. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Council. Hi, staff. Um, my name is Rochelle Harrington. I'm with the Galt Chamber. Um, and we have a couple of ev events that we're submitting applications on. Um, so the first one is for Extravaganza for March 2021. Um, we were really sad this year due to COVID. We had to cancel the event. This was the 11th year we were going to do it. It's one of the largest free family community events. Um, so we would like and we hope that we're able to have this um, next year. Um, so that's the um, first event we had an application on. Um, another one we had was for a bridal showcase that was supposed to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, this bridal showcase is going to be an opportunity for um, local um, businesses to showcase um, specifically for bridal and events. Um, so photographers, um, wineries, breweries, caterers, makeup, hair artists, photographers, 
um, everybody kind of in that realm. We wanted to try to get um, maybe even a home and auto show going at some point to give some of our local businesses opportunity to get um, people in front of them and help them with their business. Um, so that we don't have a date for as of right now because of the restrictions. So we're hoping to get just a floating date for that. So when things are lifted and we're able to um, have an event of that size again, um, to have one of the facilities for that, the Littleton Center. Um, we are withdrawing our application for the prime volleyball for next year, or actually it was for this year. Um, so that one we don't have to worry about. Um, we had also talked about teaming up with Galt Police Department and helping them with an awards dinner. Um, so every year they do an awards dinner um, and possibly making that a community event. Um, in addition, we are excited to continue to work with the city for the Winter Bird Festival, pairing it with the wine, beer, and food next year, um, as well as um, we hope that Lighting of the Night Parade can happen. Um, we could have a community event. It's the largest parade that we have. Um, there's an opportunity for um, a lot of family things to happen in the Littleton Center. And um, so we're looking forward to that as well. So thank you for your consideration and your time. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Next, we have Grace M. Grace, if you're there, can you hear us? Hey, if I need to unmute myself, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, uh, Grace Molson from the Galt Sunrise Rotary. Uh, our application is for our annual community dinner that we do for the community at Christmas time. Uh, with COVID and that, we are working very closely right now with the club to figure out how we would able, be able to make this happen um, since you know social distancing in the Civic Center for a thousand people that walk in and meet their meal and then leave, uh, you know, could be quite a challenge. Uh, we're not going to um, take back our application at this point because we're still working through it. Our um, application includes uh, rental of the uh, Littleton Center and of course, you know, use of the facilities and the baking ovens and refrigerator and all that uh, that goes along with preparing the meal. Hopefully we'll be able to ha have this happen. If it doesn't happen, this will be the first time in 10 years that we've not been able to give back to the community for the Galt Sunrise Rotary. That's all I have to say. We're just hoping and praying that something happens and we're able to move forward with it. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, maybe the next one. Mr. Mayor, can I comment? Yes. I don't know if Grace is still there, but I was going to ask her if she's still listening that I know in the past you guys have done, you know, a lot of takeout dinners for people that couldn't attend. So although I would like to be optimistic that by November um, or December um, that we can be through this to a point where we can have that event because it's such a big deal to the community. But I was just wondering if you guys had maybe thought ahead of um, possibly uh, making arrangements where we could do some kind of food delivery to families um, where we just cook at the facility and then and then uh, deliver. So I, just an idea you might want to think of like a plan B in case we get closer to that and it doesn't look like it's going to be possible. We could still have something. So anyways, I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, uh, Sean, uh, we have a new president that's just started July 1st and we've been sitting down and we've actually been looking at different possibilities we were even thinking of the possibility of doing it all like a drive-through setting where we would have the takeouts, have the trays ready. People drive through, say, I've got four families, get four meals and they're on their way. So we do have some options. I will bring that up when we have our meeting uh, to the incoming president. Um, it's gonna be a challenge. I agree with you on that, but um, yeah, no, we are looking at any type of a possibility. So thank you for that suggestion. Great, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Okay, next we have Bob Olson. 
mute myself. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm representing the Galt uh, High Alumni Association. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, this would have been our 30th year having our dinner, primary purpose of not only to get the alumni together, but also to uh, provide money for scholarships for Galt High graduates. Uh, our dinner was scheduled for the 30th of, or the 3rd of October. Uh, given what's happening, uh, the, the association made the decision to cancel for this year. Uh, as I am probably among the average of the age group of the attendees, uh, uh, we just didn't figure it was anything was going to be opening up that for that large of a group. Uh, but I do thank you for, you know, taking our application. I will be back next year because hopefully we'll be able to have our uh, 30th plus one uh, annual dinner and uh, uh, continue to raise uh, funds for all time uh, graduating seniors. Uh, we, we're trying to figure out how we're going to do some soliciting of our membership, uh, which we have about 1800 uh, and uh, so that we can give scholarships this next year, even, even without the dinner. But again, thank you for... Uh, supporting uh, golf uh, organizations. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Any Thank council you. member, any question, any discussion on that? And this is the last one, Rose, right? No, we have another one. Uh, we have Becca Dennis. All right. Uh, council member, any other uh, comment on this? No. Rose, could you move to the next one, please? So Becca, if you can hear me, you're up next. Hey, hi, um, I'm Becca Dennis. I am the activities director at Liberty Ranch High School. And um, we have put in an application for our homecoming parade, our annual homecoming parade through the elementary schools um, near us that feed into our school. Um, we don't know what the football schedule will be at this time. We're not even sure if there will be a football game at that point but we are hoping to still do some sort of parade or at least possibly have the option of it. If social distancing regulations don't allow us, then of course we'll be canceling it, but we are already looking at ways to um, have the kids social distance and, and maybe alter the way in which the parade is run. So um, that would be at the end of October. Um, so almost like a harvest parade. Um, and so we uh, greatly appreciate any consideration to help us with that, with the policing staff um, to keep that parade safe. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Now, just to uh, confirm, there's a there's two, um, there we have Liberty Ranch and Kiwanis, but I don't see their names on the attendees. So if you are someone who's not, the name's not recognizable, if you wanna raise your hand, we can give you a chance. Your, organizations that would like to speak on their behalf. No. Okay, Mayor, there's no more hands raised. You can go ahead and we'll close that. We'll finish that up. Well, Estella, I, I would like to uh, ask all the council member if they have any comment or any discussion at this time, all the uh, special event uh, uh, co-sponsor application. Mayor, Mayor, can I interrupt before? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to let you know that this was, that this was not a required a requirement by the organizations. Um, as Rose said, that this was just an opportunity for them to come in and talk. We did have three other people that didn't come in, so but their applications and information will be forwarded to council at the next meeting. I just didn't want you to think that that was all of them. So, thank you. If there is no discussion uh, from any council member or from anybody, uh, then I would like to move to the next. Mr. Mayor, I, yes. Oh. Mr. Mayor, I have a just a quick question. Um, last year was um, obviously a year ago. Um, Armando or Mr. Solis, what what was the um, total dollar amount that we were able to provide last year, and uh, as opposed to this year? So right now we're looking at, um, let me with, take out uh, the Galt High alumni, looking at about 11,000, 11, 
under twelve thousand dollars for this year and last year we looked at it about about 23 we had um we also had a couple of um people drop out at the last minute when we talked to them we had the ffa dinner on uh, the fourth street promenade um they've dropped out in the request uh due to the covid and um the chamber has uh, removed some of the requests um, as Rochelle had talked about. Um, so there, there's quite a big difference. Um, Tiny Smiles is not had not submitted for this year. So there is a big cost there savings too. So we're looking at about 11.5 right okay. now. Thank, thank you for that. That's just so unfortunate that this, uh, I mean, clearly this uh, COVID-19 has had a huge impact uh, not only on the uh, the city, but but our community in general, and and it's just sad to me to see that some of these events are not going to happen this year, and and uh, and so uh, I look forward to next uh, next meeting, uh, looking at uh, what options we have in terms of supporting our our local nonprofits as best we can. So thank you so much, I appreciate it, Mr. Solis. I have a comment for you. Yes. Um, yeah, along with what Rich said, it, it's, you don't realize how many events we have in town until we don't have them. And then you realize how many there was. My question is, if we have a group that is, that is, is applying and that we approve the funding for, and then they end up not having the event or it gets canceled, will that just roll over to next year? Or we, I mean, cause obviously they'll probably apply next year. So they're not going to actually get, you know, uh, given twice. So we'll, we just figure out the math come next year when they apply or how that work? The, the money does not roll over. Um, and so basically if, if it's not used, it goes back into the fund funding source it came from. Okay, thank you. Any other council member, any other comment? If it's not, then I'm going to move the next public comment. Under government code section 54954.3, members of the public may address the city council on non-agenda items. The public comment section is for the city council to receive comments, except for brief responses to questions. No discussion or action may be taken on any item that is not listed on the agenda. Please limit comments to a maximum of five minutes. Due to the statewide emergency and social distancing guidelines, public comments may be submitted via email to pubcom at cityofgalt.org and will be read out loud subject to the customary five minute time limitation. Also members of the public may participate electronically via HTTPS web.zoom.us forward slash j forward slash 81330106841 webinar id 8133016841 and i have received one written comment okay go ahead from jerry sauter the Planning Commission meeting on July 9th, 2020 has the Carillion Boulevard corridor plan on the planning agenda. I am disappointed that the agenda materials being presented make it appear as though there was significant community involvement and meetings with lots of input on the project. I only recall two community meetings of which only two previous meetings options were presented. I remember in one of the safety committee meetings there was one committee member saying how there would be many different plans and meetings for the community as there were with the A and C Street overpass project. I don't recall anyone in attendance being supportive of this magnitude of a project, 11 roundabouts to solve some of concerns about safety on Carillion. I also think that many people that live off Carillion have no idea what's being proposed such as the large number of roundabouts and fill the road meets community there are walkers and cyclists out all the time. Taking on this magnitude of a project is akin to selling 
the drafty house instead of fixing the draft. We have other road and infrastructure issues, but are choosing to devote resources to chase a grant for a project that supposedly will improve a road that already is one of the best in the city. But the pandemic and stage budget, state budget with this even with grant money because that money comes from the state and our taxes. I also think how in the report it states that it will just divert traffic to other roads like Marengo just shows the idiocy of the project. You're going to divide, divert traffic off Carillion to other roads and just push traffic and the associated issues to adjacent streets. With the I-5 and 99 construction going on now, I think my biggest issue with the projects is presented is just the area disruption and build out that would be required of the project. Roundabouts require full road clo closures and detours, and this will be a lot of neighborhood disruption for zero gain. My home actually backs up to Carillion, and quite frankly, I don't want a large scale construction project in my backyard. I know one council member will say this doesn't represent the view of the whole city, but when you have two public meetings, is that best hold? I think you need to be more input and the alternative. Thank you. That's all the written comments I have received. Anybody on the Zoom webinar? There is no hands raised. So any council member want to make a comment on, on that? Uh, go ahead, uh, Vice Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Ms. Hubert, there was um, uh, some intermittent audio issues going on. Um, and and I don't know if it was so much that we need to read back, but would you mind emailing that out to the council uh, just so that we get the full, full message in the event that we missed anything? Yes, I will send you all. I appreciate it. And so the council's aware we place all of those on the website as well. All right, any other council member, any comment? If it's not, then I'm going to move to the next agenda item E, report by city council member on regional board commission and committee, uh, Vice Mayor Lozano. Yeah, I'll be brief. On uh, June 18th, we had a um, SACOG board meeting. Um, we did, um, quite a bit of uh, business, um, but, but I, I, I just wanna point out a, a couple of things. Um, one uh, was um, there's uh, going to be a big push right now to establish green zones and in and, and, and support, and, and then also support uh, the SACOG Green Means Go project. If you remember last year, uh, SACOG, or the organization went to the governor and asked for uh, quite a bit of funding. We knew it was a heavy lift, uh, understanding that uh, it may or may not happen. Uh, but this year, uh, the plan was to go back out, out, uh, out and, uh, and secure that funding through the budget process. Well, now with, um, with the pandemic and the uh, state finances in, in kind of a, a question mark, um, it, it did not get into the, the budget, but um, they are gonna continue to do some advocacy um, around it and uh, through the governor's economic recovery task force. And so uh, there's still um, things moving in that direction in, in terms of green means go. Um, there's also a big push to uh, reduce vehicle miles traveled. Um, I think I mentioned in the last meeting that uh, prior to the pandemic, um, the region, the six county region had an average of about 65,000 miles traveled per day. Uh, and then uh, right after the pandemic and everything shut down, we went down to about 14,000. That's gone now back up to about 35,000 vehicle miles traveled per day. So um, what SACOG is doing is seeing what part they could play in uh, assisting uh, not only government, but private industry and, and kind of doing a public private partnership as it relates to uh, telecommuting and what we, what can be done to support that. So, um, and I, and I, I think we need to continue as long as uh, to continue as a city looking at 
the effects of telecommuting and, and what it might do after the pandemic and, um, and, and as an option for not only for employees, but for efficiency of, of our government, uh, so long as it doesn't affect the customer service piece. So um, the, uh, there is going to be a webinar. Uh, I wanted to point out uh, at our last meeting, we passed a resolution to ask uh, uh, the uh, city manager to appoint um, someone to uh, be our advocate uh, with SACOG about the 2020 funding round um, and, and how, how those funds are dispersed through the agencies. And uh, Mr. Selling is going to be the person to do that. Um, but there's going to be a webinar um, on Thursday. I believe it's from nine to 10. Or, um, and Mr. Selling, you could help me out here if, if I've missed something. Uh, nine to 10 is just gonna be informational only. Um, but then there's going to be uh, some additional um, webinars that will inter have folks interact uh, with the process and provide their input to say COG staff on uh, what, uh, what uh, the funding round should look like. Um, so if you have the opportunity on, on Thursday the 9th um, to take a look at that, and like I said, I believe it's at, uh, at 9 o'clock, but I'd have to double check that. Go ahead. Yeah, maybe just to clarify, Vice Mayor Lozano, uh, they're going to release it. It's going to be a video recording on Thursday. They're going to release it at 9, so you won't have to watch it in real time. You can watch it at your leisure, uh, just a level set. And then Friday morning at 9, they will have an open uh, comment opportunity. So, okay. Yeah, that's maybe something else in the future, too. Sorry. Yeah, that has been uh, quite the fluid. Uh, there's been lots of emails going around about that in the last couple of days. So, uh, thanks for that clarification. So, um, but anyhow, I, I, I appreciate uh, the council support uh, for this uh, moving forward um, to to address the funding round issues and and uh, some some uh, equity issues. I think in terms of uh, cities and stuff. So, um, that is all I have for the. Um, uh, SACOG report, and uh, and I have nothing else. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Campion. Uh, yes, um, on the uh, June 22nd, we had a uh, meeting of the South County Habitat Preservation, uh, JPA. Um, at that time, uh, several purchase agreements were approved, uh, acquiring lands or interest in lands, as well as approving the budget for the year. Uh, it was a relatively relatively short meeting, uh, but the, that were the highlights of the uh, of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Lanson. Uh, yes, we have not been having our youth commission meetings, but we except for one. But we do have some youth on the agenda tonight with our new members, and we will have a meeting um, next week if people want to tune in. Also, the air quality board. Uh, for for went their meeting this month, but they did send out some information on how all these fireworks were polluting um, the air with all their emissions. So it it was a noticeable difference with everyone lighting off the fireworks. And also today I was up near Watt Avenue and there was the whole place was covered with smoke. So there was a big fire up there. So people need to be careful. We're going to have some spare the air days. Need to stay inside away from that also. And that's about it. Thank you. Council member Farmer. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Sorry, I lost my uh, internet. And so I'm gonna continue on by telephone, uh, but I have nothing to report at this time. Thank you. You know, I have nothing to report, but we have a STA special meeting next week. Uh, I will report back to you uh, next meeting. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item is information consent calendar. Tina, may I have to read from item one through five, please, and the action. Uh, yes, uh, one, accept the minutes as submitted. Uh, minutes of the special meeting of June 16th, 2020, regular meeting of June 16th, 2020, special meeting of June 19th, 2020, and special meeting of June 29th, 2020. Uh, receive and file warrants for a period ending June 24th, 2020. Adopt ordinance 2020-03 of the city council 
of the City of Galt acting in its capacity as the legislative body of the City of Galt Community Facilities District 2020-1 Public Services, County of Sacramento, State of California, authorizing the levy of a special tax in such community facilities dis district, adopt a resolution one, authorizing the city manager to enter into a two year agreement with the Asian Community Center to provide the senior nutrition lunch program at the Chibola Community Center, two, authorizing the city manager at his or her sole discretion to enter into three annual renewals of this agreement and three, waiving all rental fees of the Chibola Community Center. And number five, accept the treasurer's report as submitted. Thank you. Uh, approve the consent calendar. So moved. Motion. Second. Okay, motion by Vice Mayor Lizano, second by Council Member Lampson. Tina, may I have a roll call vote, please? Vice Mayor Lozano. Aye. Council Member Farmer. Aye. Council Member Campion. Aye. Council Member Lampson. Aye. Mayor Sandu. Aye. Motion passes by five to zero. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item, schedule matter, uh, notice of public hearing. And then there is no notice of public hearing. Next agenda item, H, leg, regular calendar. Uh, city manager's office subject, approval of new job classification and salary for economic development manager. You, Mr. Eglin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Our uh, human resources director, uh, Stephanie Van Stein will be providing this particular report. Yes. Uh, good evening, Council and Mayor. Uh, before you this evening is a resolution to adopt the Economic Development Manager job classification and attached to the staff report includes the proposed job specification or job description. Um, Human Resources has also conducted a compensation review on the classification and we are recommending that the classification be placed on the mid-management salary schedule at wage grade 60. And this change is the second part to restructuring in the administration department. And as you may recall, in June, the assistant city clerk job classification was approved. And those changes with underfilling the clerk administrator and the vacancy of the executive assistant left in overall financial savings. And part of that savings will be applied to fund the economic development manager classification. Um, there is a current incumbent who's been working for the city in a part-time position who will be reclassified as the economic development manager at a reduced work schedule. And the vacancy savings from the budgeted part-time position will also be applied to fund the new job classification. Um, overall, with both of the changes in the administration department, there remains an overall savings of approximately $9,600 per month or over $115,000 per year. And at this time, I'd be happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, any council member have any question or discussion on this? Um, Mr. Mayor, I do. Yeah. This is Councilman Farmer. Yeah, go ahead, Farmer. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. So the, the position is basically being, uh, the old position of project managers is being vacated. Um, and that the person, um, uh, Ms. Mendez currently serving in that position will be moved to a new position that we are creating, which will be more of a full-time position. However, she will only be working at about three quarters time in that position. Is that correct, Stephanie? That is correct. So um, I had the finance department cost out the um, expense for the economic development manager position at three quarter time. So that cost shown in the staff report is based on three quarter time. Okay. 
And then my next question is, um, the uh, after we did the reorganization of the clerk positions, um, and then now by vacating the project manager and creating this new one, the, the net savings is what at this point by doing all of that, we're still at a net savings of how much? Yeah, so um, I think it's on the last page of the staff report. Um, so with all the changes combined that you approved in June, and if you approve this evening, um, the overall $6,600 per month or $115,000 per year. Um, and that is based on the reduced schedule, um, filling the economic development manager position at a reduced schedule. Right, right. Yeah, I just want the public to understand because um, I've had some people um, contact me regarding this and, and there was a little bit of confusion. They were thinking that we were creating a brand new position and I just want to make that clear so that it's understood the people that are watching that we're not creating a new position where we're actually, well, we are creating a new position, but we're vacating the old one and, and moving somebody in a new classification. So technically it's not a, it's not a, um, an overall cost. Um, and so, uh, and then la can you, uh, maybe, maybe Tom, our city manager can, can jump in on this. Can you just kind of summarize, uh, you know, what exactly this position is? Like what, what does Ms. Mendez do? What, what is the job sure. of the, uh, thank you. That's an excellent question because one of the things that I wanted to point out is that uh, as uh, the human resources director articulated a little earlier, this current position is working in a part-time temporary capacity for the last few years. And by establishing the economic, but she has been uh, performing duties as an economic development manager. That's really been her working title because that's what she was uh, brought in to do. But there has never been a classification specification established for economic development. Right. And so here, what we're doing is really formalizing and uh, we, in your agenda packet, uh, I know that you, you looked at this um, because we talked about it earlier, uh, but um, it, it lists all of the responsibilities that she currently undertakes now. It documents that it, it puts into uh, a, a very uh, cogent format, uh, the types of duties that she'll take on, but let me describe them in a nutshell. Really, she is going to serve as, uh, and has been serving as one of the first points of contact for new business and industry wanting to uh, take a look at the city of Galt. She responds to uh, proposals or uh, information requests provided by the uh, Governor's Office of Economic Development, uh, by uh, the Greater uh, Sacramento Economic Council when they steer folks our way. Uh, things like that. She works with existing businesses. Recruitment and retention is uh, first and foremost, and so, um, or, or retention is foremost, I should say, and then, and then really recruitment. And one of the things that this position will do is work with our existing businesses, whether they're industrial clients or retail clients, uh, to help them grow. And that may be, we, we look at some of our industrial clients right now, that are planning on expanding their facilities uh, in our industrial park. Uh, she is a central part of helping them as really an economic development ombudsman through our approval process, through the, 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 the planning process and all the steps uh, as those particular projects make their way either to the planning commission uh, or the, the uh, city council, if that's appropriate as well. And then one of the other items that um, I, I placed in this particular job description, it, and this is a uh, portion of the job that flows from what was uh, uh, the, 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 pre, or the, uh, the clerk administrator position, and it will now flow over to economic development, uh, is public information officer duties. And, and so, um, our current uh, incumbent has demonstrated a proficiency uh, at uh, serving as PIO, putting together uh, a lot of materials on behalf of the city. You see them a lot of times at city council meetings, of course, but
but then those things get translated either into a press release or some sort of story trying to get the city's name out there. And so because of her capabilities in that arena, especially this uh, job description envisions that the economic development manager can also be the public information officer for the city. Uh, and I just might add from an emergency management standpoint, when we talk about COVID-19 and what we've been dealing with uh, since uh, the beginning of March, the incumbent has been there uh, every step of the way. She has prepared uh, the COVID-19 webpage, the uh, business uh, webpage and portal for them to gain information about uh, state and federal programs available to them. So uh, it just uh, seems to fit hand in hand with uh, her uh, acumen and experience in that way. Does that answer your question, Councilmember Farmer? Yes, it does. And, and thank you very much for clarifying that. I just wanted, you know, people that are not familiar with who she is, because like you said, she's only worked in a partial capacity up until now. And she kind of, you know, does a lot behind the scenes. So you don't see her, um, you know, uh, in the meetings, council meetings a lot, unless she's doing presentations. But I, I think it's great. Um, you know, she's really good about being, you know, as a business owner myself, she, she's been, you know, a liaison to existing businesses, which is so important to myself you know, um, reaching out to existing businesses, talking about their concerns and, and, and think, you know, helping, helping, uh, you know, I guess, uh, say nurture ideas that maybe they have on how to be better in the community. Um, so it's not just all about, you know, going after new business. She, she does a lot to try to, um, you know, help uh, what we have here and, 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 and cultivate that even more. And so I'm excited that this will give her, you know, more latitude to do that. And, um, and then the, the, the whole PIO part of it, you know, the public information officer duties is exciting because that's something that I think a lot of us from the council have, have wanted to see uh, more of a role develop on that. So I'm, I'm excited. I think it's a good thing. And I'm, I'm glad we're able to do all this, uh, you know, shifting around and such and make, make it happen without, without actually costing us really any more money. So um, right. thank you, Tom. Right. And thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, for that. This is a unique position that performs a unique role. And so we have uh, created a, a, a unique discrete way uh, through uh, what you're appro potentially approving here tonight to ensure that our economic development activities and to, for that matter, our PIO activities can be um, uh, undertaken uh, uh, through this plan. Thank you. Any other council member? Yeah, I just want to um, say thank you, Tom and um, Amy and Chris for doing this. Um, Amy's been doing a lot for the city for a few years, trying to come up with things behind the scenes si from signage to everything. So kind of nice to see this position. I think she'll be fabulous as a PIO. So um, great job. Thank you. Council member Campion, any? Uh, nothing really to add other than what's been said. I, I agree with it. I think it's uh, timely and uh, she does an excellent job. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Lozano has a question. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. I, I, I want to echo uh, everything that all of my colleagues have said. And, uh, and, and again, I think uh, Mr. Hagman, for your leadership um, over the last several months, as as uh, you know, we we um, struggle with budget issues, and and this certainly was a way to to um, address that, but more importantly, address some of the needs uh, that the city has in terms of uh, job function. And I think we have great uh, great staff that uh, not only uh, in the city clerk's office, but but every, if, as you look through the phases of this, uh, really did a good job. And so I thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your leadership in that, in this arena. And uh, I look forward to uh, some of the things coming from the position. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, you know, the lastly, uh, I think my colleagues already uh, said something at this job. I'm going to support that job because this job, and Amy was a, a, a 
as an economic development specialist, and that job is not for the economic development, it's really important for the city, not for this city, every city. So, and the other thing is this uh, new job, they have uh, much more responsibility and are adding like another assigned duties on that job. And overall, I thank you for Tom, he reorganized the position and at the end, we're still saving 115, almost thousand dollars a year. Uh, and, I, and the other thing is, uh, I have no doubt in my mind, uh, Kim, Amy, she is doing the job. Economic development, she's not bringing business from outside. He's also going and also already doing the inside business, like in the, with the business already is a local, she helping when anybody call her, she always be available. She get a, a good guidance. Well, that would say she's the best qualified to do this. Oh, and I will be going to support it. And now I would, I would like to open to the public comment. I have not received any public comments. No. I have no raised hands at this time. Thank you. I'm going to close the uh, public comment. Council, have last time any other comment on this one? Otherwise, I'm looking for entertaining a motion. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Uh, who is on the second, please? Farmer. Okay. Farmer. Also by council member Campion and second by council member Farmer. Tina, may I have a roll call vote, please? Vice Mayor Lozano. Aye. Council Member Farmer. Aye. Council Member Campion. Aye. Council Member Lampson. Page, I think off your mute. <laughs> uh, <there's laughs> <you are. laughs> Mayor Sandu. Aye. Motion passes by five to zero. Thank you. All right, next uh, agenda item is subject uh, COVID-19 update, Mr. Hagley. You are on mute, Tom. Thank you, sorry. Uh, I wanted to go over with you some of the- uh, Mr. Hagley. Yes, sir. Uh, can you do the update and also uh, did I ask you about a uh, little bit about that uh, county program we have, if you yep. can? I got Thank it in here. Yep. Thank you. Um, so for our COVID update uh, for tonight's council meeting, uh, as the council is generally aware, as the community may be aware, we're seeing a very significant increases in the infection rate uh, in Sacramento County. But as you know, we straddle the border with uh, San Joaquin County and they're seeing very significant updates uh, or, or increases as well. Um, they have more than tripled in, in just a couple weeks time. Uh, at one point you may recall that San Joaquin County had about half the number of cases as Sacramento. Well, uh, a little earlier today when I took the numbers, Sacramento was uh, indicating a total of 4,566 cases. Uh, they've had a few more deaths. There are 76 deaths in Sacramento County. In Galt, of which we're obviously a part, we have climbed to 178 COVID-19 cases. That is a really dramatic increase, very significant increase for our city. And just by way of uh, a, a little bit of comparison, um, we're 67. We have uh, surpassed Folsom, so we're 67 uh, uh, cases ahead of Folsom, who has a population of approximately 81,000, and we're just three uh, infection cases behind Citrus Heights, which has a, a population of approximately 90,000. Uh, San Joaquin County reports today, earlier today, 5,600 total uh, COVID cases and 55 deaths. Uh, San Joaquin County also reports uh, very significant increases in total hospitalizations 
as well as intensive care unit usage. Because of the very significant spikes in COVID-19 cases across the state, last week the governor issued an order that all restaurants in 19 specific uh, California counties uh, showing serious outbreaks be closed to indoor dining. That includes Sacramento County. There is not a restaurant in Sacramento County nor in the city of Galt that should be offering indoor dining. Uh, the governor also closed all bars and group pubs in those same counties. Uh, and the Sacramento County Department of Public Health then updated its or health order last Friday to re reflect these uh, same requirements. In, in some cases, uh, we're finding that the Sacramento County Health Order uh, is a little more stringent than the, or restrictive than the state order, which is permissible. Restaurants may provide outdoor dining but are mandated by law to separate tables by a minimum of six feet. Additionally, all employees in restaurants are mandated by law to follow the guidance for dine-in restaurants, which requires, amongst other things, that restaurant employees must wear masks and gloves and take other precautions um, in protection of public health. Every restaurant has an affirmative responsibility to protect public health in this manner. Uh, the Galt Pool opened on July 1st, 2020, uh, and it opened under specific uh, approvals and guidance from the Sacramento County Department of Public Health. The pool is operated differently than it was before, and we do have limitations on the total number of uh, swimmers that can be accommodated uh, in the facility as a result of COVID-19. So far, there have been a few people that have uh, used the facility uh, since it opened, but those are, um, th those are much lower numbers uh, than the, uh, the, the total COVID capacity, if you will. The Galt Area Meals on Wheels program continues to operate and deliver meals to seniors uh, in that particular program. And so that has been operational since, it, well, it's always been operational for many years, but it certainly has been operational uh, since day one in the uh, COVID crisis. Additionally, uh, the city is participating in a broader program for the provision of senior meals in cooperation with Sacramento County. The program is similar to the Great Plates program, uh, but is wholly uh, put together and operated by the county, uh, includes the cities of Folsom, Isleton, and Galt, the historic fig cities, uh, if you go back a lot of years in this, city, in, in, in this area, uh, but it's called Dine-In Sacramento. Uh, two local Galt restaurants, uh, Los Islitas uh, and Pasosas by Lucia uh, applied for and are participating in that program. And the city is uh, working with the county to prepare some uh, materials that, that we'll be getting out on our website and our Facebook page to highlight uh, that program uh, to our community. Right now, you can uh, call 211 which is the information line at the uh, at Sacramento County, and uh, they'll connect you with that particular program and uh, be able to get seniors who uh, uh, need that uh, assistance uh, set up with uh, meal delivery. Uh, and that's uh, two meals a day, uh, in addition to Meals on Wheels, three, so that would be a total of three meals a day to seniors who would want to participate in that. The fortunate thing about the county program is that they are undertaking all of the setup, all of the requirements, and they are funding the program uh, on behalf of the, uh, the big cities as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the council might have. Thank you. Yeah, Tom, I have a question. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to I just wanted to clarify, obviously you have a lot of people talking about the, uh, the number of cases and um, 
I did want to just clarify two things. One is um, obviously the number has climbed very fast. Um, the, the number that shows for the for us for Galt is is basically cases since day one. So this is not just active cases. This is cases that have have been active since the beginning. And also, I wanted to clarify that. This is for the entire 95632 area code, not just the city limits of Galt, but this is the outlying area of the rural area that still has shared that zip code. Is that correct, Tom? No, actually it's not. What, um, and, and let me just uh, provide a, a, a little distinction there because um, I think at first we were thinking it was all of 95632. What's attributable to each of the cities is a discrete situs address within the city limits of those cities. So the 173 cases that are attributable uh, to Galt uh, when, they, when they're talking the city of Galt uh, are actual situs addresses within our city limits, within our city. And you're right, for, uh, for probably from, uh, gosh, the beginning of this say in, in March until mid-May, you'll, you'll recall we were at 13 cases. And we had a lot of uh, you know, uh, concern uh, out in the community about still remaining closed and, and the, the, the statewide health order and, and, and all. But since uh, about the middle of May uh, until uh, right now, so for about the last six weeks, we've really climbed very significantly uh, in the city of Galt, within the city limits. Uh, alone, and we, we aren't seeing uh, any uh, remarkable abatement of, of that growth. And so it's, you know, it's not just Galt, uh, but uh, certainly brought more broadly within our county that brought the state uh, in to say 19 counties, including Sacramento, have to dial back the, the, the opening of some of these venues in order to uh, try to uh, begin again to uh, stem the, um, the, the, the tide. But the information we get from the county is that when they say 173 cases uh, in Galt, um, that that is a specific address within the city limits and that anything else in 95632 that's outside of the city limits is attributable to the unincorporated county area. Well, I, I brought that up because I was just looking at the website, I actually sent you a link. It, it does show on the on the county's website, it shows a map and it shows, it shows, you know, it shows boundaries and it says 95632 and you can clearly see the map goes way outside the city limits. And then it says that this area is 170 whatever cases. So I, I'm just, I think, I don't, I'm confused on the, what the website's saying and maybe what they're telling you, but I, it seems to be they're attributing it to the zip code. And not, not to downplay the number, I'm just saying that I, people have been asking me if that includes the rural area. And so I only tell them what I see on the website. So I, I yeah. don't know. We yeah, might. we previously asked them that for clarity. And what they indicated to us at the time was that um, if, it's, uh, if they're highlighting something in the city that that is a discrete address within the city limits, but that if you look at all of that particular map, and I, I look at that map every day, um, it, all of the unincorporated areas of the county are included within some zip code somewhere. And, and so what they've tried to do is break it down between city and one of their uh, listings there in addition to all of the cities is unincorporated county. And that's made up of all of the zip codes in the county that are at, fall outside of uh, specific city limits. At least that's what we've been told in the past. Okay, so you're saying there's like a so you're saying there's like a line item that yes that is consists of unincorporated, and that's basically all the all the unincorporated areas from all the zip code areas into that bundle. Is that what you're as saying? they've previously informed us? Yes. Okay. You can see okay, that. That's under, that's the only that's only, that's the only question I had. I just was um, just trying to understand that what I was seeing on the site, and then, uh, and of course the uh, the um, can you do you have any? I, I know you're not. <laughs> I know you're not by any means an expert on this, but I, I just it's, do you have any insight to why 
we would see such a rapid number increase in Galt compared to say like Folsom or another city that's way bigger than ours. It seemed like I just, I'm suspicious that their reporting is not as accurate. And so their numbers seems to stay lower. Uh, well, I just, it just puzzles me that it would climb so quickly here and not in a bigger city that has more people. So this is clearly empirical. Okay. So I'm not, yeah. you know, this is based on a compilation of discussions with Dr. Kasiri, the, county health officer with other people from county health. It's uh, personal, even my own personal observations as I go north uh, in the county versus being here in Galt. Uh, and then it's also informed by a lot of what uh, we read, whether it's regional, uh, you know, uh, news stories out of the Sacramento, re greater Sacramento region that are covering the area. There was a SACD article just last week, um, I've been interviewed a number of times by the SACB uh, about this. And what I would say is that um, one of the things that the county health officer attributed the rise to, and we asked specifically in Galt, in fact, our, our uh, newly minted PIO uh, specifically asked this question uh, a week or a week and a half ago, as we sought a broader breakdown of that, uh, that, that finite number of attributable cases in Galt. And what they were telling us is that their contact tracing was largely taking it to um, uh, private events or events, be mass, mass events, whether it's at a, uh, a home, a private home, or some other location where people are feeling comfortable they aren't wearing masks, they aren't staying six feet apart, and it's proliferating the spread of COVID-19. And so one of the things that, that informed apparently the governor uh, about this was the opening of bars, the opening of breweries, uh, things like that, even restaurants where uh, perhaps uh, things weren't being taken as seriously, or the, the PPE measures, I should say, weren't being taken uh, as uh, seriously as perhaps they otherwise should be, and that that's leading to this um, increase. Then from the empirical standpoint, or just from an observational standpoint, you know, I've been in Elk Grove, I've been in Folsom, I've been in Sacramento, and I see a lot more face masks uh, up north than I do uh, down here and even in San Joaquin County. And so I think one of the unfortunate things that occurred was that when Galt was at 13 cases for six weeks or, or so, I mean, I, I, it just seemed to me that it, it, it was at least that long that um, the, you know, uh, and, and as we got into this clamor for opening up, open up, open up, it was just open up because we were all sick of being home, but we didn't perhaps open up and follow uh, proper PPE. So then the last thing I'll say about PPE, which for us are masks, you wear a mask and the other, you're, you, you wear a mask to protect the other person. The other person should wear a mask to protect you. But every day at 5 p.m., I listen to a hospital's report and it is hospital uh, administrators talking about uh, what they're experiencing within the hospitals themselves. And one of the things they continue to outline is the need for PPE and for the proper donning and doffing, as they call it, of uh, PPE. They are so serious about it in hospitals that they have uh, observers watch people put it on and watch people take it off because uh, you, you, you can easily contaminate others. They, they watch them put it on so that when they're in hospital, they're not contaminating other coworkers or patients. They watch them take it off and make sure they sanitize and do all the things that they're supposed to do so that they don't uh, bring it home. And the other part of that is that they're constantly uh, asking their staff to ensure that they're exercising proper PPE uh, when they're out at home or going to the grocery store and, and all of that. Um, it's very frustrating to deal with this overall uh, pandemic and all that it's done to us in our society. But, um, 
you know, it's wear a dang mask is uh, really, you know, it, it, we, we can think of a lot of things that have happened over the course of our history as a country. And there have been a lot tougher sacrifices asked of the American population than to simply wear a mask. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I was only just saying that I think there's some fact. I, I think about Gaul being a bedroom community, and I think about now that a lot of people are returning to work, most people are, that, that we now have this, 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 this regular daily exodus of people leaving Gaul to go to their jobs, and then in turn could be, you know, being exposed and then coming back. So I think there's other factors. But I'm, what I'm getting at is I, 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 I agree with what you're saying. I, I, I think that the number of restaurants and things like that that we have here compared to other cities would, would warrant saying that what, what I'm getting at is I don't, I don't, I don't like to, I wouldn't like to chalk up our number to saying that, that Galtonians are just, you know, far more irresponsible than people in Folsom or Ranch Cordova. There has to be other criteria that's involved in that. It can't just be that, you know, our restaurants were just doing whatever and nobody else was whatever, or our, you know, uh, we didn't have, I mean, we had no events. We had no events here. So, I mean, I knew there was other events. So I just, it's hard to believe that that criteria, I just feel like there's, some sort of reporting. I feel like golf is being reported more accurately. So I don't dispute the numbers. I, what I'm disputing is I think that I feel like other areas are not being, are not correct. I think the numbers could be higher and they're not showing higher. I just have a hard time believing that we're higher than Folsom. It's just, but, but anyways, it's all subjective or it's all, um, it's all uh, uh, objective. So I, 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 I appreciate your input on it. And, uh, and you're right. I mean, it's, you know, no matter what, it's, um, you know, we've obviously had to backpedal with some uh, some restrictions um, in, in light of this. And so, um, you know, hopefully we'll we'll get through it. So um, I appreciate your update, Tom, on everything. And uh, and I don't know if any other council members have questions, but I'm, I'm done with my comments. Thank you. Any other council member? Uh, go ahead, Vice Mayor Lazano. Yeah, not, not just just a, a quick comment. Uh, thanks again, uh, Mr. Hagman, for all that you're doing to keep us updated uh, pretty regularly. Uh, we get text messages pretty regularly. Uh, I won't say daily anymore, um, but, but pretty darn close. And so uh, thank you for keeping us updated. Um, and, and I would just implore our community, whether you're in our own community uh, or, or in your workplace or any, any place. I understand that uh, this is going to continue to be an issue. And we need to do to, uh, 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 The one last thing I would, I would throw out there just for the sake of, of um, at least uh, thinking about it in the future. Um, I, I believe, uh, and again, I have no data really to support it other than just what I've observed uh, I believe also that uh, the amount of available testing uh, now uh, is much different than it was even a month ago. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the more that we test, uh, the more, uh, you know, opportunity there is for uh, reporting. And, and not that I'm uh, saying we shouldn't be testing, but I think as you look at the graph uh, from the beginning of the down, um, um, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, 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 just one more. Do what we can do. Yeah, maybe one more fact. Because you bring up a good point about testing. And so, you know, this is uh, just from Dr. Fauci, uh, who, who indicated that certainly uh, the more you test, uh, the, the more infections you're going to uh, come up with. Right. But what he said that you have to look at is the positivity rate. And if you're positive, ideally, the more testing you do, if you're following all the protocols, all the PPE protocols, your positivity rate drops. But that when it's when the positivity rate is rising, as it is uh, fairly significantly in Sacramento and San Joaquin counties, that that cannot be attributable simply to more testing. Uh, that the, uh, th that um, the, the positivity rate is also an indication of this, the communicable spread of this particular disease. And so that's why he emphasizes the need for the wearing of masks and, and the like. 
You know, you know, Tom, I, I appreciate that. It also, something that I watch is the hospitalization rates. As I'm looking now, we have 41 ICU cases for COVID in the hospitals in Sacramento County. And I think that's the highest it's been. And then we have 148 in the hospital. So that's higher. So even though the positivity rate's getting higher and the death rate should lower the percentage, we still have a lot of people going into the hospital. And so that's, that's the big concern I feel. Thank you. Council member Campion. No comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Hagler, thank you for giving us an update every week and also give us an update today. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I have kind of information uh, on the county program, and you said there is only two restaurants, they apply it or they just uh, they just selected only two. No, they we only had two apply, and so I think that the application materials. Armando may be able to chime in on this, uh, 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 just for clarification. But I believe that everyone was invited to apply. There were two that applied. Uh, you, it's not a order off the menu type situation. It's uh, neither Great Plates nor um, the uh, the dine in Sacramento is strictly an order off the the restaurant menu type of deal. It, the, the nutritional value uh, is very specific. Um, and, and so the types of meals they have to prepare for, for the, the, the seniors is fairly specific. But Mondo, maybe you could comment on um, how we got word out to the various restaurants. It is, there, there's a guideline that was sent out and a restaurant would have to meet these guidelines to be able to apply for it. So some of them, it, it was it was a pretty strict guideline of what they have to meet. Uh, kind of like our Meals on Wheels program were, were you know, low sodium, those type of things. And uh, two applied. Um, the county asked us if we wanted to choose one over the other. We decided to allow both of them to serve meals. Um, and uh, that's kind of where we are right now. Armando, uh, how just Armando, how do you send that notices to all the restaurant by mail or how do you send a DC the requirement? That that was by the county. The county, this is a county uh, program and they sent out the information. So we don't send any information. That's just the county send that information to all the restaurant. I, I can get that information for you. Um, I was under the impression that they sent them out to all the restaurants in Galt, uh, but I can verify that with you and get that info back to you. Yeah, could you please, thank you. If nobody had no question, the next agenda item is I communication, Tina, any? No communication. Okay, next agenda item is city clerk support. All right, so this is to appoint uh, the youth commissioners. Um, the recommendation is to accept the student appointment selected by the Galt Youth Commission Adult Mentors per Galt Municipal Code Section 2.85.050. Student members shall be interviewed by the adult mentor members of the commission. Each student member shall be submitted for acceptance by the city council and shall serve for a two year term commencing on June 1 and ending on May 31st. There were five student member vacancies. Six applications were received. Uh, the applicants chosen by the adult mentors were Anna Romero, Isabel Sosa, Alexa Clavis, Alexis Gold, and Ashley Rivas. Um, are there any questions before voting on the selection of the applicants? I don't have any questions. Anybody, any council member have any question? Maybe they introduce themselves and say hello to us. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Alexa Mungo Best and new youth commissioner. I am Ashley Rivas. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
Um, well, hello, I'm Isabella Sosa. I'm Alexis Gold. I'm Anna Romero. Thank you. Did the city council have any questions? Yeah, I would like to say something. Just I can't see their faces because I'm not on the uh, video, but I just that the girls are listening. I, I did see their applications and uh, you guys uh, look like you're going to be a great fit for the commission. And um, I just want to say thank you for for uh, wanting to be involved in something that's so important and and, and uh, you know serving your community in this way. So I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. I would like to thank you all the youth commissioner they applied for that uh, for commission. So it does need a vote. I was just going to congratulate him and I've never seen so many commissioners with their first names all starting with A. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'd move for approval. I'd like to second that. All right, Gina, may I have a roll call vote, please? Vice Mayor Lozano. Aye. Council Member Farmer. Aye. Council Member Campion. Aye. Council Member Lampson. Aye. Mayor Sandu. Aye. Motion passes by five to zero. Uh, city Council, uh, City Clerk, you want an oath to add Ms. Oak to the office? Yes, so I need the uh, youth commissioners to go ahead. I'm going to give you your uh, oath of office. Uh, raise your right hand and re repeat after me. I and state your name. I, Ashley Rivas. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Do swear. That I will support and defend. That, that I will support, support and defend. defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, the Constitution of the United, United, United States. States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution, the Constitution, the Constitution of the State of California. California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against, against all, all enemies, foreign, foreign and domestic. And domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That, that I will bear true faith, faith and allegiance. And allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And, and, and the Constitution, and Constitution of the State of California. State of California. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose, or purpose, or purpose of, evasion. of evasion, and during such time, and during, and during such, time, such time, as I am a student member, as I am a, as student, I am a student, student member. member of the Galt Youth Commission. Of the Galt Youth Commission. I will faithfully discharge the duties. I will faithfully, I will faithfully discharge, discharge, discharge the duties. Of commission member. Of commission, of commission, of commission member, member. According to the best of my ability. According, according to, to the best of, the of my ability. ability. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations for all the youth commissioners. Mayor, could I just say something real quick? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Vice Mayor. Uh, I, I, congratulations, uh, Anna, Isabella, Alexa, Ashley, and Alexis. You're, uh, you're going to be a good addition. Um, I also want to thank, I see John Gordon is on the, on the call or on the, in the meeting, uh, who is an adult mentor, and then also our own council member, uh, Paige Lampson, for uh, all that you do to to foster this this uh, this group uh, and build leadership skills, and I know at the last meeting we talked about uh, their presentation, and you guys do an awesome job. So 
the youth, you are in great hands. Um, and, and thank you again to uh, Mr. Gordon and uh, also Councilmember Lamson for all you do for this group. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it, obviously, it, you know, it takes a team. It's not me alone. I have the other adult mentors that uh, really provide a lot of expertise, a lot of support. So um, we're very fortunate to have a good team looking forward to seeing what we could do this year in light of uh, what we're facing. But I think we all have a positive attitude and we're going to try to figure something out to, to serve the city. Thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate it. I like I said, Mr. Gordon. I I see you're the only one on here, and 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 Councilmember uh, Lamson. But uh, it do certainly pass that on to uh, the other adult mentors that may may not be able to be on tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, if you don't mind, Mayor, I'll just mention the other members. We have Lisa Klotz, um, uh, Harbinger Up. Tracy Cross, and then Jennifer, oh, I'm dropping her last name, but we do have two openings. So we do need some um, adults to put some applications in. So um, welcome new commissioners, ladies, I guess I can say welcome ladies. Hmm. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Other thank you. And having some fun. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next end item is comments by staff. Mr. Hagley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll uh, uh, start off with uh, our uh, Human Resources Director. Any additional comments, uh, Stephanie? No further comments this evening. Okay, Armando. Um, I have nothing, but you know what? I'm sorry. I do have uh, Wally will be running again this weekend, Friday and Saturday, 8.30 to 10. This will be the last weekend for people to catch his show, and then uh, he'll be going away. So if uh, you guys haven't had a chance to come out and see him, come out and see him, and that's about it. Thank you. Uh, Chief Sockman. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that uh, the Lighting of the Heroes, that was an amazing event. Great uh Community turnout, Armando. Your crew just did a fantastic job. So, uh, thank you, Chief. Um, Public Works. Thank you. Couldn't have done it without Mike's uh, guys putting it up. Uh, Mike Selling, our Public Works Director. Uh, just want to congratulate all the uh, new Gall Youth Commissioners. Looks like you got a great group going forward. So. Appreciate that. Uh, it's just uh, warms the heart to see uh, some young people, uh, you know, being motivated to uh, to serve their community. Thanks. City Clerk Hubert. Nothing new, thank you. Nothing new, okay. Um, our City Attorney, Kimberly Hood. Uh, congratulations to youth commissioner commission members uh, and then I know staff is working on the um, CARES Act allocation so the governor and Department of Finance have released the information on that so that cities can get their allocation as you may recall the only the big cities got the direct allocation so now um, cities can apply for that from the Department of Finance so we'll you'll likely be hearing more about that uh, in the next few weeks okay thank you and then last but not least uh, Chris Arias, our community development director. Uh, at least for a couple more months. So uh, a couple things. Uh, it was mentioned, uh, you know, a planning commission this week. We do have the Carillion Boulevard master plan going forward. So we are seeking a recommendation from the planning commission. Another item of note is the uh, subdivision and annexation project. That is also going for a recommendation and that's coming to later in August. So, and then the big news, I think you all uh, were informed by the city manager that I did give notice and I will be leaving this. Starting to work for the city of Manteca at the end of August, beginning of September. I want to tell you that it was an extremely difficult decision for me. And it has nothing to do with how I feel about golf and what golf has done for me. But I'm really excited about an opportunity that I have in Manteca 
to go further in my professional career and hopefully bring something to the table for them. But it was an extremely difficult position. I have a great staff here that I'll miss greatly. The department heads are awesome. It's a really good team. Tom has been great as a Pittsburgh City Manager. Uh, you know, you, you couldn't have picked a better guy to put us through uh, with the ransomware attack, uh, then also COVID and a bunch of other so uh, you, you had the right guy at the helm at the right time. It was a really good decision by council. Of course, I will miss uh, your leadership. And, and it was a, just a tough decision. And I, I still have a couple months, so I'm not gone yet. But uh, I just want to thank you all for the opportunity that I have. I still have to get his personnel evaluation. <laughs> And, and that's it, Mr. Mayor. I don't have anything uh, specific. All right. Uh, well, other than I, I do want to congratulate Chris. Chris has been a uh, positive uh, influence both amongst the staff and uh, the city generally. He's been with the city for 15 years. Um, even before my arrival, I've heard a lot about Chris Arias and, uh, you know, a lot of good things. And so it's it's been a pleasure for me to uh, work with Chris for uh, the last 16 or so months, and um, I, uh, I I appreciate the ability to have done so. And I know that the department heads will miss him. Uh, they'll miss the banter. Uh, it won't be nearly as fun to cut down a tree anymore. Um, you know, a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of things we'll miss with, uh, with 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 Chris's departure to uh, Manteca. But all all kidding aside, congratulations, Chris and. Mm -hmm. We wish you the best of luck, and, and we know that we, we still have you here for a couple more months. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Lozano. Yeah, I, I will be brief. Um, Mr. Rice, just real quick. Um, we did hear in public comment, um, like you mentioned, the Curlian Boulevard um, project or, or the Planning Commission um, is going to hear next, uh, actually tomorrow, tomorrow right? Uh, Thursday. 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 Um, did, what kind of notice did we put out for that planning commission meeting? And was it, um, and what is the legal notice that we're required to put out? And then my second part to that question is, and maybe you, uh, I don't know if you have it in front of you now, but what kind of um, public input meetings have we had uh, where people have had the opportunity uh, to speak on this. And I, and I will just say this, is that I have heard from uh, folks in the neighborhoods of uh, the Carillion Boulevard about uh, about their feelings on this. But I, I just want to get those questions uh, out there to see uh, what kind of uh, notice and response uh, we received. So for, for noticing, uh, we are required by the Brown Act to provide the typical 72 hour agenda noticing. We did get the agenda out at the beginning of the week. We also got other notices out on social media toward the end of last week that were then picked up, I think, at the beginning of this week. So we met the legal requirements for the noticing, but we typically like to go above just the legal noticing requirement. Um, but I wanna say that the public outreach that we had for it, we did have three public meetings where we allowed the public to uh, we had two at the Public Safety Committee uh, meetings, and those were well attended, and we did get a lot of feedback at those two meetings. And then the third meeting was at a Planning Commission meeting. So we had already brought this project to Planning Commission, I want to say about six months ago, and it was still an opportunity for the public to weigh in. And I think for a road plan, and I know this is significant, uh, that is, that's sufficient opportunity, and we still would be able to take comments uh, all during that time. And then we also had a CEQA document out for public review for 30 days. Uh, you know, and that was well published and sent to a variety of places, including in the newspaper. But uh, we do plan to bring that. We are taking a breather. We're not turning around and bringing it to city council right away. So we're July 9th. We are at Planning Commission and we're waiting until August 18th to bring it to City Council to provide more opportunity to get notices out. Uh, so 
so we can hear it from the public. But, it, you know, uh, Councilman Lozano, I think uh, your comments on SACOG were timely following that public comment. So your comments regarding DMT and the change of things that are altering their travel pattern I mean, plays into what we are planning to do with Pavilion Boulevard and match what the region and the state is trying to do with wealth out of the corridor. So uh, that's, that's what I got. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And that's all I had really on that topic. I want to thank uh, Mr. Solis and Public Work and, and everyone else that uh, was involved with the Lights for Heroes events uh, last two weekends ago. Uh, I was able to make it out two nights and uh, and we had quite a few cars come through and I, I, I don't know what the total number at the end of the day was, but uh, I think there were uh, north of 300 cars on Friday night and a couple hundred on, on Saturday and, and Sunday was pretty busy at least uh, while I was there. So. Thank you for uh, for doing that uh, that uh, <clears throat> event for the community, um, and uh, the the Wally exhibit was second to none. And uh, I know a lot of a lot of time and energy uh, in a short amount of time was put into that. And so uh, so thank you so much. I I, uh, I appreciate uh, that community event. Uh, even in the COVID um, era, we were able to pull pull something off that was really cool. And, uh, and I'll say that uh, it was impressive. Uh, and so, and I got a lot of feedback from the community on, uh, on, on the fact that they were, they're happy to see you put something on. And then uh, on top of that, I'm very uh, impressed with the, the uh, thank you so much. For, like I said, Armando and your staff and police department and, and you know, chief, I saw them out there. Uh, and then of course, public works and everybody else that was involved. So. Thank you so much. Lastly, I just want to uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Rice for your um, your uh, new position. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a way to deny your resignation letter, but if we could, I'm sure we would. Uh, I, I really appreciate you uh, and and the work that uh, that you've put into educating me. Uh, even before I was on the council, uh, I met with you and. Uh, and, and really, uh, your your uh, professionalism and your ability to relay you know, some of the work that you do is pretty technical. And uh, and not that none of the other department heads were really helpful because everyone really was, but I think you went above and beyond with uh, because I had no really kind of uh, true background in what you do. And so thank you for uh, for all you did to help me along. Um, and uh, and you're certainly going to be missed. And I sent you an email, and and in it, we, you know, I, I I said, you know, it's bittersweet because I'm happy for you. I'm glad that you uh, have another opportunity. Um, but your position can be a bit to keep fill. And uh, and we will and we will uh, if we can't deny the resignation letter, uh, we'll certainly uh, miss you, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to uh, meeting again one day. Before. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council Member Campion. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, Chris, uh, I just wanted to again congratulate you. Um, you, uh, I've known you now for over 15 years. I, I remember when we hired you. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it was your personality and your ability to work with people. So it doesn't surprise me that, uh, you know, you have grown uh, in the profession that you have uh, and that uh, um, you're been accepted by that very fortunate city to the south of us. Uh, well, Kurt, I, know I, you know, I would like to thank you. I mean, I, I, I owe a lot to you, not just giving me this opportunity and hiring me, which was a really good choice, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, really, the training, you know, I don't think I could have gotten the training I got from you and from Galt uh, anywhere else. And I, I sincerely appreciate that. So my success is in part due to what you have provided and thank you very much well i appreciate that but i, I think you would have done it on your own but uh, uh i just wanted to wish you very well and uh, uh we'll thank, you. You. thank you thank you council member Lampson. yeah chris I'm, I'm a little disappointed i already expressed that to you today um i've never seen 
anyone handle a crowd like you handle a crowd. You're just so professional and calm and the way you explain things, people see and understand that's been quite um, quite a learning thing for me to watch and um, I could still work on that. So I'm, I'm hoping for the best for you. I'm hoping maybe you'll come back someday and, but I'm still waiting for that golden shovel. You got a couple, couple weeks left. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Council member Farmer. Yeah, thank you. Um, first off, I want to thank um, Parks and Rec, Public Works, uh, PD, everybody that was involved with the Lighting of Heroes event. Um, unfortunately, I'll admit I did not go. I was busy moving and it was total crunch time and I was going from dusk to dawn uh, trying to move out of my, new, my old home to my new home and I unfortunately just didn't get time. But when I would drive by, it was just a line of cars and it was just great to see how many people were willing to come out and, and see it. And I heard nothing but good feedback from everybody who went. I had people that went more than one night. So um, thank you to, to Jackie and Armando and Parks and Rec team, Public Works for all their help. Everybody that was involved, it was great. Thank you very much. It was, it was something you had threw together last minute. It was awesome. And uh, thank you for that. I also want to say thanks to PD for, um, you know, all their hard work on the 4th of July. We had uh, as everybody knew, we had a lot of proud Americans out celebrating, and uh, I, I know you guys were overwhelmed with calls that night, and uh, I know there was a lot of chatter about, you know, uh, why is the PD not responding to this illegal firework and this one and that one, but I know that you guys were out there, um, you know, chasing your tails, basically. It was crazy that night, So, uh, but I appreciate you guys working hard that night and uh, doing what you can to keep all of us safe. And then um, uh, lastly, um, I, I want to say, you know, thanks, uh, Chris, for your service to Galt. And uh, I know that uh, one thing I always remember about Chris is he didn't seem to take anything personal. There was many times where, you know, I didn't agree with something that, that Chris was proposing and I, and I kind of felt a little bad about it. But he always kind of had, I could look over and see him kind of sitting there and he'd, he'd have this little chuckle um, while he was sitting there and he just, he, he just kind of didn't, you know, he just didn't take things personally. It was just all business. And, 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 and if, you know, he, he was able to just laugh and, 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 uh, you know, be positive about things. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure our city will miss you. I still don't understand why he would go to Manteca, but I mean, golf obviously the greatest city in this area. Manteca is a step down in my opinion. So I, but whatever his reasoning is, I, you know, <laughs> but I, but I, but I congratulate you, Chris, and it'll be tough to see you go. So, um, you know, good luck in your endeavors down there, and um, and uh, we wish you all the best. And and that's really all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I have a few comments. Uh, first, uh, I attended the Light for the Heroes display weekend uh, before the last. It was a really nice event uh, with great displays honoring our local heroes. Thank you to the city and thank you, Chris Department. Second year, uh, we had had a recent spike in a positive uh, COVID-19 last few weeks in local city of God and surroundings. I want to remind everyone to continue practicing social distancing and we see it. And the third thing I like to congratulation to all the planning commissioners. And lastly, I like to congratulation and feel sad about Chris, our economic development, our community development director. He have all the qualities. He have all the qualifications. The one thing I re I never forget him around ten years ago, his dignity and respect. I was a citizen in this car, I went to his office. His attitude is same thing today. So he, he does not care what position he have. He does not care what the position of the other person is talking to him. His main quality is dignity and respect. And it should be every human being is best. And I, I, I still remember 10 years ago, I went to an office. He's talking to me the same way when I go to his office. And we can miss him, congratulations. Thank you. And if any other council member or any comment, then I would like to adjourn that meeting. Be safe. Me too, thank you. Good night.